Hello, my name is Junganelli and today we are going to be joining a Zoom class. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Good. Can we continue? Yes, we can continue. Nearly 90% of all employed persons in Uganda, nearly, nearly 90%, Nearly 90% of all employed persons in Uganda Nearly 90% of all employed persons in Uganda make a living make a living make a living by working in the informal sector by working in the informal sector. That's according to International Labor Organization or ELO. So pardon so, to the first statement, the first sentence. I say the informal sector is now seen, the informal sector is now seen as the next engine of growth for Uganda's economy, for Uganda's economy. Full stop. Nearly 90%, nearly 90%, nearly 90% of all employed persons in Uganda, of all employed persons in Uganda, make a living, make a living, by working in the informal sector, by working in the informal sector, full stop. Okay, let's pause there. You would see that uh, in Uganda, wherever, everywhere you pass, Seta, Mukono, Boyogere, Chambogo, wherever, guys are into the informal sector. There are so many people that you see, whether they are vending, whether they are hawking, whether they are doing something, and when you ask them, what's the name of this business? Where are you located? They can't even say, but of course, it's the biggest employer of people in Uganda. That's why even government can't so much enforce people to go into formal employ formal sector because, I mean, it's not the one that started these businesses for these people. So when we are talking about the informal sector today, we, what we need to be cognizant about is that what is it, even its contribution to the economy? What is its contribution to the world or to the Uganda's economy as far as you could see, you know? Uh, when you look at, uh, maybe like this one I can ask you, class, what is the composition of men and women in the informal sector? Who dominates the sector between men and women? Women. 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 When you, when women you go by to... 65%. Women yeah. 65%. 65%. Okay. Yeah, and I name it, of course, uh, you know, according to the statistics that definitely are there from Ubos, you see that there are so many women entrepreneurs, especially in the informal economy, than men. When you go to Nakawa market, aren't you maybe after this class, you walk in the Nakawa market just for observation and look at what kind of businesses are done and you see the dominancy of the, the gender, the gender there. They wake up very early in the morning, women, aren't they are in the market offloading things, making sure everything is put up in order to sell. That's the informal sector we are talking about. But is that the entrepreneurship we want, you know? Is it the entrepreneurship we want as people who have gone, you know, uh, uh, to, to school, you know? So what can you change? You know? So if you're talking about the informal sector, uh, as far as, as Ugandan context is concerned, what do you think you can change, you know? So let's look at the features of the informal sector, the characteristics of the informal sector. the characteristics of informal sector. The characteristics of the informal sector. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. 
so I really request for the topic of the lectures and the sub subheading. You request for what? We are studying the topic we are handling now and the subheading. <laughs> You've just joined? No. <laughs> Have you just joined the class about the informal sector today? We are talking about the structure of entrepreneurship in Uganda. Can you see topic three? Yes. So, class, let me assume you are done all the things above, above this topic because uh, I don't want to go into things when you people you've not Covered. Had you covered the, yes. the theories with madam? Yes. Yes, so today we are talking about the structure of the informal, well, the structure of entrepreneurship in Uganda. But the challenge is that so many people live on their gadgets. Uh, I, I really don't know. Can you mute your microphone? Oh, you have a, a hand up. What, what is it? Can you ask? Hmm? I've already asked. And then you can put your hand down and then also mute your microphone because it's disturbing the class. Thank you. So we are looking at the features or characteristics of the informal sector. And uh, that's where we were. And first is uh, low level of organization. Low level of organization in scale. Low level of organization. Or you can say in brackets, disorganized arrangements. Disorganized arrangements low levels of organization, low level of organization in brackets, disorganized the arrangements. Next, characterized by family members, characterized by family members as workers, characterized by family members as workers. characterized by family members as workers. You would see that this informal sector kind of businesses are mostly people who work there are family members, immediate family. So it's, uh, you know, businesses where you cannot see people bringing applications and then you're having a job. Even when you're employing someone, they bring you a girl from the village. You, what you know about her is only her national ID and the person who brought her for you. So those are some of the characteristics that happen happening there. Next is uh, heterogeneity in activities. Heterogeneity in activities. Heterogeneity. I don't know whether you know the spelling of heterogeneity, but let me help you. Heterogeneity in activities, check the charts for the word heterogeneity. Heterogeneous means so many things. Uh, entrepreneurs in the informal sector, they have so many things they deal in, you know. They deal in, uh, someone sells uh, juice, sells uh, uh, Samona jelly, sells clothes, he has a hair salon, he has in the same shop, you know. So it's very, very hard to tell which kind of business someone is running. So that's also a characteristic. And of course, you can bear witness with me. Uh, there is what we call easier entry and exit than in the formal sector, than the formal sector. Easier 
entry and exit. Pardon. I said easier entry. Easier entry. And exit than in the informal sector. You realize some of you have so told us about your businesses. Today you're in Bushera, the other day you're in Juice, the other day you are not doing anything, then you go to Saloon and you know, so it's easy to enter and leave the informal sector. But of course, I want to, after this slide, I want after characteristics, I want to, 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 to give a, a disclaimer and give a direction to what you can you guys do uh, uh, that can definitely push you further. So next. Mostly labor is intensive. Mostly labor is intensive. Mostly labor is intensive. Next, low levels of skills. Low levels of skills. Low levels of skills. Low levels of skills. Next, no formal training. No formal training. No formal training as workers learn on the job. No formal training as workers learn on the job. No formal training as workers learn on the job. And ETC, you can say ETC and many others, and many others. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel.